Life Audio. Welcome to the Team Us podcast, where we share how grace, commitment, and cooperation can help couples live the everyday moments of marriage together. Hey everyone, we're Ted and Ashley Slater. In many places, the new school year has started. How can you stay connected as a couple when the fall schedule threatens to pull you apart? Very dramatic. Very. (laughs) Today, we're sharing some marriage survival tips for the new school year. So, Ted, when you were in school, and I'm talking like grade school, Mm. middle school, high school, when does school like typically start for you? Oh, it was like in the 20s, in the 1920s, when when I was just but a lad. No, no, I meant what month of the year. I know, but back then you had three full months of summer. Like so June, summer. July, August. And so end of August, beginning of September is when you went back to school. Yeah. Yeah, I think Which, that's... you know, I've heard it's it was done because of like, so you could do the farming. You didn't have to go to school. You had three months to work at your property or whatever. Kind of makes sense to have a shorter summer. Anyway. Yeah, but it feels like those were the good old days. These are the good old days. Just <laughs> Just wait and see. Well, nowadays, and especially here in Arizona... It feels like school, the school year starts really early. Yeah, like, it's like a month or two of summer and then boof. Yeah, some schools started like last week, the last week of July. Mm-hmm. I mean, we yeah. have a bit. I know, right? I mean, it's hot here, so what else are you going to do? Yeah. But we have a bit more flexibility because we homeschool. But the first two years we were here, at least one of our girls was enrolled in a local school. And that first week usually happened in late July. Mm-hmm. And I think there are even some schools like up in the Phoenix area that go year round. I mean, it makes sense, but I, I do love summer. I do too. Like, it's I, good for the family, good for the kids. But, you know, I, I can see why schools would want to do it shorter summers. You uh, they'll forget less. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we have some homeschool friends that go year round too. I'm like, we don't do that. No. I need the break. The yeah. kids need the break. So anyway, I've been planning out our fall and I've realized that it's busy. You know, there's our homeschooling schedule and our high school junior is going to be taking a dual enrollment class at a local community college. I mean, we have two college age daughters who are in community college and they still live at home, Mm -hmm. but they can kind of get themselves around. There's also dance and theater auditions and productions. And there's an animation conference that I'm taking one of our daughters to later in the fall. So there's just a lot on the schedule. It can feel a little overwhelming at first, especially after we've been in summer and had some break. Right. But when the schedule's busy, I'm angry all the time. Are you? (laughs) No. I thought you were angry all the time when you're sitting at your computer too much working. Uh, Yeah, muttering. We won't go there. No, we won't go there. Okay. But I don't think we're alone. You know, for those who are listening, if you Mm -hmm. have school aged kids like we do, you got a might full schedule. Get it. You have a full schedule, and you might be tempted to make your marriage less of a priority as you adjust to the new school right. year. Giving all your energy to the school stuff and the kids stuff. Right, but if that's the case, this episode is your encouragement not to do that. So after this break, we'll share what I'm calling some marriage survival tips for the new school year. So we're starting a new school year, and with that comes a full schedule. So what are some ways that we as couples can keep our relationship a priority and not only survive the busyness, but thrive during it? All right. So I have some suggestions, and you can, yep. if you think of some as we go, How many you know, throw them in there. Go through? I have four. Four? That's one more than three. Yes. Well, you know, three plus a bonus. Nice. One, okay, we I get guess. three tips and a bonus. Ooh, that sounds better than four. <laughs> Let's hear the first. <laughs> Everyone likes a bonus. Okay. <laughs> One, create a plan. So back in June, we had James and Arlene Pelican on the podcast. And they talked about how to prioritize your marriage over your kids. If you haven't listened to that one, listen to it. It's it's really good. It's a good one. They're, yeah. Yeah. It's such encouragement. So in addition to being an author, speaker, and podcaster, Arlene is also a spokesperson for National Marriage Week, which I think she mentioned in that interview. And she shared when we were talking to them how one of the things that National Marriage Week or the people behind it encourage is for couples to connect daily, date weekly, and get away regularly. So my suggestion is, as you step into the school year, don't just 
create a plan or a calendar for your kids' schedules and activities and school events, but create one for your marriage too. Come up with how you can connect daily, date weekly, and get away regularly. And I know that that like getting away regularly might be more challenging. I'll hit on that in a minute. Mm-hmm. But I mean, maybe connecting daily is getting up and drinking coffee together in the morning. I mean, that's not how you and I are going to no, connect in the morning because I'm an early riser and you are not. And I'm a late worker. Right. Or maybe it's taking a walk in the evening or like we've started liking to do, lay on the trampoline and look at the stars at night. Yes. It's a, uh, a giant hammock. Yes, it has. <laughs> it's a jumping pad by day, a hammock by night. Do we Have we ever talked about pit stop? I don't know. It sounds so weird, but go ahead and okay. share. We we regularly have a pit stop in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and what it is, is so Ashley does get up earlier than me. And she gets some coffee and does morning stuff. And then I'm sort of groggy. I start waking up and then she comes back uh, into the bedroom. And I guess it's kind of like she... I'm laying there on my back and she comes over and nest, nestles, nestles. You, you stretch your arm out. Stretch it's... my left arm out and she puts her neck in my armpit. Yeah. And it's a pit stop. And it's we just kind stop. of. <laughs> that's we just trademark that. That's funny. Yeah. But that's, that's one way we connect daily. It's just a little pit yeah, stop. I just come and like check in on you. Yep. See how your day's Actually, starting. How's the day starting? And I've already it's like coffee. drank coffee and exercised yeah, and. Sometimes anyway, I'm too talkative because that's I've had it. So. That's one thing we do that, you know, I guess we had to come up with that ourselves. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a morning check-in. It's it just doesn't check-in. involve sure. coffee. No coffee. So, you know, so maybe this create a plan for like the date night thing is that you pick a night each week that you will do your best to have a date night. And I know realistically you can plan and some weeks you might not get it in, but the goal is to plan for it. And you, if you can't get out, because either because of like finances or babysitter challenges, you can plan an at-home date. I mean, we did that for years when our kids were young because we didn't live close to family. Dinner and a movie. Right. You know, or, we had our teriyaki chicken and our broccoli mm-hmm. and then watch something. Sometimes we play Scrabble. We should do that. I like Scrabble. Scrabble is a fun game. Yeah. Or Banana Grams. It's similar. I don't recall Banana I don't think you've played it before. We should play Shoots and Ladders. <laughs> I used to remember mm-hmm. Candyland. Candy. Well, you know that Jane Austen, we have a Jane Austen like oh, matchmaking right. game or something. And it's basically oh, shoots no. and ladders with Jane Austen <laughs> trivia. Ladders. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, like I say connect daily and then, you know, date weekly. But how does that look different if you're like having your date night at home? I think you set it apart by maybe spending a longer amount of time together or doing something special like getting takeout or something like that right yeah sometimes we'd have like crab cakes we'd go to costco and get crab cakes remember that yes we would still do that if they still carried them they don't carry me because they had the good ones they did like the grocery store like the regular grocery store ones are too much bread too small we're, we could learn how to make our own, but then we'd have to learn how to make our own. I'd rather just have someone else make uh-huh. it for me. <laughs> yeah, if it's going to be date night, somebody else just make it for us. Yeah. Okay. So I mentioned that, you know, the last one was get away regularly. And I mentioned that I think that's the hardest of the three, especially if your kids are young. And as I mentioned, when our kids were young, we didn't live near family. So we weren't really able to get away regularly. We can do it more now because we have adult children yeah. who will watch the non-adult children. So get away, could it be like going to the museum? Or do you mean like get away for like a day or two? You know, I don't know what the National Marriage Week means by that specifically. I think you can interpret your interpret it your own way, because what if you don't have the finances to go away like, regularly overnight, absolutely. but you could drive two hours and hike or you could go to a yeah. museum and you could spend the day together. I think couples should interpret that in what fits the current season sure. and financial sure. Right. You can have Stuff. restrictions of some kind. I think the thing is to step away from life for hours. Uh, figuratively. Yeah. We don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the responsibilities okay. of life. Step away from life. Yes. So <laughs> I <don't>. think that, <laughs> wow, I think that during the, you know, the busyness of the school year, especially as you're adjusting, you know, if. As couples, we can connect daily and date weekly. It's going to make a big difference and keep us connected. Sounds good. Let's go to number two. All right. Number two, 
reduce commitments. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, we're not talking about to each other. No. Because that would be, like, bad. Yeah, that's not what I mean. Because that's what I heard. That's what... Oh, really? <laughs> reduce... Hey, Ted, let's reduce commitments. Yeah, that's not what I was saying. I would take a sip of water here. So you talk for a minute. You are so loud. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Yes, that was not me. I've been working a lot today. <laughs> My brain is kind of weird. All right. So anyway, yes. Reduce, reduce commitments. I'm not going to be able to stop giggling. Not to each other. But. Right. So I think some of the people listening, you are probably overcommitted. As we go into the yeah, school year, you're saying yes to too many things. It could be that you're letting your kids have so many activities that you don't have any free nights to schedule a date night. I mean, we've been there in very busy seasons, oh, yeah. or maybe there are too many obligation or, or obligations or responsibilities that don't include your spouse. What I'm about to say might ruffle some feathers. Uh-oh. Well, it's good to serve your church and your community. If you have no time for your spouse because of it, you're too busy. You need a little self-care. Yes. Right? Oh. Ellie, if you and, and your marriage aren't doing well, then it, it's it's not you're not going to be able to serve as, as, as well. Yes. I mean, I think self-care is different than time with your spouse. Like, you know, what I mean by self-care is, like, if the two become one, self-care is like the care of a couple. Yeah. I mean, I think you need self-care, too, in order to be a good spouse. Right. Like, you were a better husband after you soak your feet because you're a little calmer. I, I do like soaking my feet. Right. So. Except that one time when I electrocuted myself. Oh, no. Yeah, that was scary. Was scary. That was yeah. scary. Anyway. So, reduce your commitments. Look at the calendar and figure out what you can say no to. And then if a new opportunity arises... Evaluate how the time commitment will affect your marriage before you say yes. Sure. Yeah. You don't always have to say yes to good things. When I read somewhere, you also don't have to explain. I'm one of those people that feels like I have to justify and explain if I say no to something. But I really don't have to. I can just say, no, I'm not able to do that. And I don't have to give along. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a little better at doing that, just saying, no, I can't do that. But it's hard because I want, I don't know, I'm an over-explainer sometimes. Like you're doing right now? Yes, exactly, <laughs> like I'm doing right now. Okay, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll share a couple more marriage survival tips for the school year. All right, so we've talked about two so yes. far. We have talked about create a game plan. Or create a plan. Reduce, reduce commitments. commitments. Good. The third thing is let other things go. I feel like singing a song, but I'm not going to. Good. Because it's probably copyrighted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so even when you reduce commitments, there's still just a lot to do in life, right? Dishes, um, laundry, mm-hmm. vacuuming. I need to vacuum. Picking weeds. <laughs> exactly. And in the busyness... Things and even some relationships will get neglected. It's just, it's life. But you can be, or we can be as couples, intentional to make sure our marriage isn't one of those things that gets neglected. And one way to do that is to decide in advance what things to neglect. Mm-hmm. My email inbox. Let's ne- neglect it for a, a day. Yeah. I think I can probably do that. I'm not sure you can. I can. And I used to be, okay, it's totally a tangent here. I like tangents. I used to be one of those people who kept my email inbox clean and I answered everything. Now I do not. Sometimes I miss things and like I had something. It was like six months later and I saw it and I was like, oh, shoot, I never saw this or responded to it. That's not I don't do that as much. But I there's very different me when it comes to email in my 40s than I was in like my (laughs) 20s. But I think for me, you know, if things get really busy, I let housekeeping fall into this category. It's not that we have a dirty house but our house might be a little messier and that's okay it's okay and i do we have do have kids to help i mean sometimes i have to ask them a lot yeah we could delegate more but that's one of the things that i am okay with not being as on top of so that we can instead sit and listen to music oh we've done that yeah okay so i would say to those listening Think what things can you move further down in your priority list in order to make more room for your marriage in the busy season. 
Sounds good. Is it time for the bonus? Yes. So this is either number four or it's the bonus one. It's the bonus. So tackle tasks together. Wow. That's a lot of T sound there. We do a tongue twister. So you can't let go of all the to-do list items, right? Some things have to be done, like yard work or you're going to get a letter like us. We have not gotten this. Not in a while. You will get a letter from your neighborhood association Mm -hmm. saying you better fix that. So I think instead of dividing and conquering, which I think we often do as Mm. couples, we can tackle some of the tasks together. For example, do yard work together Mm -hmm. or grocery shopping together or cook dinner together and find ways to, you know, get the chores done, but maybe make them more fun and an opportunity to spend time together. You know, that reminds me of something. Sometimes, like if we need to drive the girls to rehearsal or something, sometimes we drive you and I both take them there together, and then we get a meal together. So it's kind of like inserting a little date night into a obligation, a family obligation. Yes. And I think we're going to get a lot of that in the coming months because oh, we're going north. We're going to, our girls are going to be doing a production about 35 minutes away. So I think some of those times, I think we have to drive them there three times a week, mm-hmm. make some of those into date nights. Yeah. There's some so, good restaurants up in the oh, area. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. To recap, here are three marriage survival (laughs) tips and a bonus for the school year. One, create a game plan. Two, reduce commitments. Three, let other things go. And four, tackle tasks together. Okay, after this break, we'll be back with this week's Us Time Challenge. So for this week's Us Time Challenge, I say those listening should pull out their calendar and create a plan for connecting daily and dating weekly. And they can have some flexibility. Like I said, some, I think if you get... have a goal of of getting a meal together or doing something together every Wednesday night. Right. And I say if you get two date nights in a month, but you don't get four in or you get three in or whatever... Don't be too hard on yourselves. Because you're doing better than your favorite podcasters. Are they? (laughs) No, I'm just just being goofy. So Uh that's my challenge. What do you think? Shoot for four if you get two a month. That's better than than most people. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll enjoy it too. And it's cheaper than taking the whole family out. Right. And maybe you'll work up to four. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us on the Team Us podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast, and we'd love to have you leave a review over at Apple Podcasts. We're looking forward to next time as we keep talking about how grace, commitment, and cooperation can help couples live the everyday moments of marriage together. Team Us with Ted and Ashley Slater is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review the podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.